Jesus. Oh, you mother. He got baptized by a streetcar. <laughs> It's stickier out here. Feel it right here. Wow. That's crazy. That's nuts. That's pretty good. I can't believe it. This stuff is definitely way better. Dude, three burnouts on that and it would be killer. Oh yeah. All right guys, so we're here in the shop today. Today's project, we're gonna be taking these stock front brakes off and replacing with them with an aerospace front brake kit for an S10 G body. Um, should be should be a good upgrade. I've had these stock brakes on here for ever since I've had the truck. Well, ever since the truck was a truck, I guess. They've been on there, but yeah. Uh, it should be a fun little install. So we're gonna start taking the old brakes off. Luckily, we've had them off before, and they're not too big of a pain to get them broke loose. Old heavy calipers off here. This, these are single single piston caliper, and the aerospace ones are a four piston. Hopefully, that gives us a little bit better stopping power. We're starting to go faster and faster, and it's getting harder to stop. I know at Magnolia, I ended up in the grass a couple times. You um, did? Yeah, unfortunately. You didn't it's tell really me dark. That. It's really dark down there, so it comes up quick. Gee, many Christmas. But yeah, we did a little slide in the grass, but that's okay. It just adds more excitement. All right, so we got the caliper bolts out. We're gonna slide this caliper up out of there. Just let it hang. And pads don't look too bad, I guess. Just let it hang there, so we don't okay. let all the fluid out. Yeah, we're gonna replace this brake hose too with some braided braided hose. Um, a little bit longer that way when we do get a little bit more travel out of this thing we're not going to overextend it and break a brake line so we'll pop the dust cover off if we can get it out we'll get to our cotter pin Tight. 
that one. Yeah, the other side was loose, and this one was kind of tight. Hmm. So we got the castle nut off, and now he's going to slide the rotor off the spindle and try not to lose the bearings and parts. So the next thing we've got to do is remove this dust shield, okay? Because this bolt and this bolt for the dust shield is what the aerospace bracket bolts to that holds the caliper. And then we have to take the cutting wheel and cut these two ears off of the factory spindle. So no more dust covers. Tommy's truck doesn't have them. I took them off of his because, well, actually Tommy's rotted off and I just removed what was left of him. Mine were in good shape. Yeah. You still got one more bolt there, Slinky. You're right. You are right. Say that again. You're right. <laughs> Never gets old. Yep. Next thing we have to do is we have to cut this ear off of the factory spindle because the bracket for the aerospace calipers is going to bolt to here and there and this ear and this ear are going to be in the way so we have to cut those off So we've got the spindle cut uh, for the aftermarket bracket. The next thing we have to do is we have to drill this hole and this hole out and tap those for three eighths, three eighths bolts. So we're gonna do that now. So this hole isn't drilled all the way through, but it's gonna to need to be. So we're gonna drill a pilot hole first to get it started. We've got our holes drilled. I've already tapped that one. I'm just going to run this tap in and thread this bolt hole. One thing you want to make sure that you don't do when you're tapping threads in a brand new hole is you want to take it in there so far and then back it out a little bit, clean the threads out. You don't want to just continue one direction all the way in because you'll most likely end up tearing the threads up or breaking the tap off <clears throat> in the bolt hole. So I usually go in two or three turns, quarter turns, whatever, and then back it off back and forth a couple times. And once you get in there so far, like I'm in there about as far as I want to go, I'll take it out and then clean the threads out. Go ahead and Might get another pound out of it, out of the front if I get all the grease off this thing. Here's an idea. How about we paint the whole damn truck? Let's vote. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's take a vote, guys. If you want to see me paint the truck, make it all one color. I don't want to just paint it. I want to restore it. Like? Like Tommy's truck. Take the frame off of it. Cut the cage out of it. Pull the cab and everything off the frame. Completely restore it and put it all back. I don't know about that, but maybe paint it. Listen, put it all back the way it came from the factory, the stripe kit, the whole nine yards, just like we did Tommy's. That way it's still identifiable? Yeah, that way everybody knows who it is. But the truck would be preserved because right now, at the rate it's going, the paint's literally falling off of it. The, it's the original paint from the doors back. And like the top of the cab is almost bare. It's really starting to look rough. It looks a lot worse than the day we got it. I can tell you that. So we're preserving it, that's the thing now? We would be preserving it, yes. <laughs> I mean, look man, this thing, <clears throat> it sees a lot of abuse. It does. And I think people would rather see it preserved than just continue to go to shit. Because right now it's just going to shit. What do you guys think? Leave it, leave it the way it is or make it uh, basically what the factory color would have been with the stripe kit so it would be blue it would just look like a brand new 1988 s10 with that stripe kit on it just the way it came from the factory but very well preserved so that the truck will last let me know what you guys think in the comments I vote preserve it because I love this truck I, you know we had originally intended to restore it and then it kind of got, I don't know if you'd call it famous. I don't know what the hell you call what, we, what, what, what we're doing. I don't know what you call it. Yeah, because if, if we were to do that, I mean, I could keep those stock doors, hang them up, and then put the lightweight doors on it and then paint it, you know, to where it looks like it was the factory with the light doors on it. And then at least we would still have the doors off the old truck. They look ratty. Okay, so the bracket fits. Of the, I don't know if you can see this or not, but we've had to cut all this out of the original uh, spindle so that that bracket can lay across there. So I've checked that, made sure it all fits. So now what we need to do is assemble the caliper to the bracket. So on these, just in case somebody ever does this after they watch us do it, on these brackets, <clears throat> this has a steel insert in the aluminum bracket and the caliper bolts up flush with the aluminum bracket and the insert sticks out the other side. In case you're wondering, because I had to find out the hard way which way it goes. It took me a minute. This is not the correct way to do this, so you probably shouldn't show everybody the way I do it. You're supposed to have the proper tool to pack wheel bearings. And I don't have one, I never have had one. So, you do it the hillbilly way, I guess. Jen! Come here. Look what the cat drug in. What's up? Not much. How you guys doing? All right. Just putting these brakes on. Once we once we did one side, the next side wasn't too bad. The holes in the pads aren't even drilled out big enough. Are you shitting me? Maybe that's why you're sitting back down and lost the pads. Yeah, I lost pads one time. So I drilled them out the quarter inch and I put a quarter inch bolt in there and locked tight of the damn things. Or put a lock nut on it.
holds like fucking religiously. Yeah. So it says something a little bit different every time I put these on. Probably just because the way I've got it hillbilly up here, but 29.6, I've got 30.2 a couple times. Um, the shipping weight on the new brake setup was 30 pounds. I didn't actually weigh them before I put them on, but I'm thinking that it probably lost around 30 pounds and a lot of drag. Um, like I said, they wouldn't spin freely before. As soon as you take your hand off them, they would stop. So hopefully we've lost a little bit of drag there and uh, some rotating weight. We're gonna keep lightening this thing up a little bit at a time. Uh, now back it up. Start, no, back start it. from scratch. Ready? You gotta do the back it up. Rewind. <laughs> I think you got that covered. I don't think so. Okay. So let's say you got 12 inches of suspension travel. Are the little okay? devil's horns coming out? It's probably in your ears. Okay? Alright. This is your 12 inches of suspension travel. Okay. This is your unsprung wig. Yep. Alright. So this includes your brakes, or Billy Steel Iron brakes, and heavy shit. Okay? okay? So this represents everything that moves down when you jack the car up. Yeah. Okay? Got it. So, when you're lifting this up, and see how that's like nice fluid motion? Yeah. Now use that same energy and do it a foot away from here. Okay? These, this would represent the aluminum brakes, okay. the lightweight stuff, okay? Now these are the old brakes, okay? Now use that same amount of momentum and do the, do the demonstration yourself. Go about a foot away, okay? And just do a nice fluid motion. Well, uh, <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> this is my girlfriend. <laughs> but, bro, this totally just, reminds me of like a boat anchor. If you had two different weighted just anchors. Lift the fucking you, thing, Maddie. Just lift the fucking thing, Just lift It's a lot harder, yeah. No, there's a shock. Yeah. Oh. It's, the, it's the shock. The initial yank. It's the initial yank, okay? The initial, yeah. It's the initial. Look at that yank. The transition. It's the initial. I don't think he did it with the same fluid motion as the other one. <laughs> that one definitely yanks, dude. 